Hello and welcome to another computing video. In this video I'm going to briefly introduce the, the canvas element from HTML5. Uh, now what the canvas element does is it gives you a rectangle of the screen that you can paint to directly. Uh, you get something called the 2D graphics context which is an object that has an API and you invoke drawing commands on that object to paint into that rectangle of the screen. So let's start with a simple example. Um, here is uh, some HTML, so doc type say it's HTML5, uh, the wrapper HTML5, uh, HTML tags, uh, title of canvas example and what we're going to do we're going to create a div and within that div we're going to put a canvas and we're going to make it 640 wide, uh, 480 high and we're going to give it the ID the canvas and then we're going to load a script that's going to invoke drawing commands upon that canvas. Uh, now let me copy that HTML let me pop into Visual Studio Code and I have a directory here called live. Um, this directory is being served up by a web server that is running locally on my computer and that first demo.html at the moment it says nothing to see yet. Let's go over to Firefox and here is that page saying nothing to see yet. Well let's go and paste in our HTML of the canvas example and so this is then going to load this script canvasexample.js and so at the moment canvasexample.js just says use, stri use strict. I'd better put a script in there to actually demo this to um, start drawing to that canvas. Uh, so if I pop back to the slide what we're going to do is we are going to get the element by its ID the canvas which is that one. Once we've got a reference to the canvas we're going to ask it for its 2D graphics context and then we're going to start invoking our drawing commands and I'm just going to tell it context move to zero zero that's the top left hand corner uh, I would now like to queue up a line to um, 200 comma 100 and now I would tell you uh, like to tell you to uh, draw strokes to do those drawing commands that I've just done so let me copy that code paste it into my example over here pop back to Firefox and hit refresh and now I have a canvas that has a diagonal line. Um, now something to mention, let's just pop back into the HTML and let's put in a little bit of CSS styling and all I'm going to say is I would like uh, canvas elements uh, to have a background uh, color and let's make that hash DDD so a light gray and let's save that and let's reload it and that will show you kind of so this this here this is 0 comma 0 the top left hand corner of the canvas element uh, even though it's not quite in the top left hand corner of my browser because well if I was to inspect that element um, the HTML has introduced some some padding or some margin etc but so 0 0 is the lo top left hand corner of my canvas and there that gray rectangle there that is the canvas that I can paint into Okay, let's keep going. So, um, I can gather together a set of drawing commands and so I can start with a begin path. I can then follow this with some sequence of move to's, line to's and other drawing commands. I'll show you a few but I'm not going to show you all of them. There's lots of them. There's an API you can look it up uh, and, and I'll show you where to, where to look up that API though. Um, but then once you've done some move to's and line to's and you, you've queued up these commands uh, in your path uh, you can then say well now context stroke to draw outlines of those shapes that I just gave you and that will use the stroke style uh, property of the drawing context to decide how to draw them, what colour, what um, what thickness of line etc. Or I could say actually I'd like you to fill them in and for that I would like you to use the fill style to say if it's orange or um, we'll see in a little bit how to create a gradient as well. Um, so here is a little example, context begin me a path, uh, set me the stroke style to be I'd like you to draw this in blue, uh, move to 2020 uh, line to 200 comma 20 and now uh, do strokes, outline strokes for that path. So let's copy that code and let us go and paste this into canvas example. Uh, we still need to get the context so I'm just going to replace these drawing commands here. And so this should, if I go to Firefox and hit refresh, this should give me a blue horizontal line. There it is. 
Now, something else to mention. I put a little link here on to another demo. Uh, this time, this demo is one that is in the Mozilla Developer Network uh, web documents, uh, which is some very nice documentation on uh, the API for things that are available in browsers and in HTML5. And this link goes to the API documentation for Canvas Rendering Context 2D dot begin path. And we can see down here there's some syntax for it. And this is how you call it. Uh, we can also see though there's an example. And here is the example in some text. But if we scroll a bit further down, uh, we'll see here that they've got it and they've set it up neatly live for us. So here it is drawing a the blue horizontal line and the green, uh, also a green diagonal line. Uh, but if I wanted to turn that blue line red, I could go and edit code down here and say, I would like that red, please. And now it's red. Uh, or I could say instead of 200 comma 20, I would like it to draw to 200 comma 120, somewhere around here, I think. Oh, not far off uh, there. Uh, but so some of these examples in the MDN documentation, you can edit the examples live there, or you can open them in CodePen or in JS Fiddle. Um, there are other sites that let you uh, play around with JavaScript and HTML live in the browser and try it out. OK, let's pop back to the slides and keep on going. Uh, pardon me while I just cough for a moment. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, winter in Armadale and I have a little bit of a cold. Uh, OK, so let's keep on going. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention from the documentation here uh, is that there isn't actually a circle command. There is an ellipse command. So if I scroll through the, the left hand side of what's available on Canvas Rendering Context 2D, um, I, I, I won't find circle. Uh, I will find ellipse and it's got a little lab logo next to it to say, well, that's experimental. Check the browser compatibility table. Uh, well, actually, that one is, um, let's just shrink that down so it renders it horizontally. Uh, that one is available in modern browsers now. Uh, but the one I'm going to show you is the arc command, uh, which is available in modern and not so modern browsers as well. And the arc command, uh, you give it the center of the arc, you give it a radius, but you also give it a starting angle and an end angle. And the thing to mention is that start angle and that end angle, they're in radians. Uh, now, whereas there are um, 360 degrees in a circle, there are two pi radians in a circle. So let's go and do a little example of this. Uh, let's pop, uh, let's go to Visual Studio Code and let's go down here and let me go uh, context.arc and I'm doing this at the moment as a separate group and I'm going to say I would like that centered on 100 comma 100 I'd like it with a radius of 35 and I would like it to start at zero degrees and to do the full circle so uh, two pi radians in the circle so I want it to go two times math.pi and let me save that let me pop to Firefox and let me hit refresh and oh hang on uh, where has uh, oh of course I queued up the command but I didn't say stroke let's now go context.stroke to tell it to actually draw that draw that arc for me and so there it is as a circle uh, but you'll notice that I've got this this trailing bit over here where um, it finished drawing that line but now to go to draw the arc it's kind of left a bit behind um, so to stop that from happening I want to tell it to uh, begin a path again so that that is uh, all neatly separate and now if I hit refresh now that is one path this is another path and the, the, those should uh, draw independently um, I could incidentally say that I would like this to fill instead and now I have a black circle and it is black because the default fill style just happens to be uh, to make it black. Let's go and change the fill style property and say I would like that to be filled in in orange, please. And now if I hit refresh, I now have a blue line and an orange circle. Uh, OK, let's pop back to the slides for a moment. Uh, so that is the ctx.arc. Um, we could also draw some text. We could say that we want to fill some text to draw filled in text, or we could say that we want to do uh, a stroke text, outlines of letters. Uh, let's pop to this demo on the Mozilla documentation, and let's scroll down to where they have their live example. Let's zoom in a bit uh, to see it a bit, uh, and we can see that it set the font to be 48 pixels in serif, and it would like to fill the text, hello world, 
um, with the, the bottom left hand corner of the text being at location 50 comma 100. Uh, we can see it's the bottom left hand corner um, because well if we change it to zero horizontally uh, the left hand lines up with the left margin. If we change it to zero vertically we'll just well we can just kind of see it peeking down onto the, the bottom of the, the screen. Uh, but so the, the baseline uh, of the text is now at 100 uh, here. Uh, I could change the the style here if I want. I could make that into sans serif and now that is in sans serif font. I could change that to be monospaced if I want it. Um, and I could if I want to change that to be stroke text uh, instead and now I have the outline of that text. Let's copy that and let's paste that into um, let's paste that into this example and reload it in Firefox over here and we can see that we've painted hello world over the top of our orange circle we can see this is in blue uh, because if we have a look earlier in our document we set the stroke style to blue and well we haven't changed it so the stroke style is still blue um, okay let's keep on going uh, now this drawing of text this is going to be handy being able to draw onto a canvas when we do something a bit, bit later on in the course as well. Uh, when we look at uh, WebGL. WebGL is a technology for um, rendering graphics card accelerated 3D graphics into the browser. And it's quite powerful and it's quite useful. Uh, but one of the things it doesn't uh, tend to include is... Uh, being able to draw text directly into the 3D scene graph. And so there's a couple of tricks that they do with um, instead with rendering the text to a 2D canvas and either overlaying it over the top of the scene or grabbing that as a texture to put into the scene. Uh, but we'd see that later on if we uh, have a look at uh, WebGL. For the moment, let's just keep moving. OK, translate. Sometimes when we're drawing objects, we want to move them on the canvas. And sometimes we want to move uh, a bunch of them at once. And uh, so, for example, if I popped over to Firefox and I wanted all of this stuff to move to the right 100 pixels, uh, it may well be that I don't want to go and edit this move to command and edit this line to command and edit the center of this arc and edit the drawing location of this circle. Um, individually to, to, to do the moves. It may be that I just want to do something once. And so what I can do is I can, uh, if you like, change the origin um, of the coordinate system that the uh, graphics context is using. Uh, let's pop first of all to the example in the Mozilla documentation. And you'll see down here they have an example of it. And here is a rectangle. And the command they have for drawing the rectangle says fill rect 0 comma 0 so as in that there is the location 0 0 but we can see it's not the location 0 0 and it's because we've translated the origin by 50 pixels and 50 pixels to put the origin here. Uh, they've got a little diagram for us up here in the syntax section here. Uh, so ctx.translatevxy it's effectively taking the origin from there and moving the origin x pixels to the right, y pixels down, that is now the location 0, 0, so far as the graphics drawing context is concerned. Um, at the end, they have a little bit of code here to say to reset the current transformation matrix to the identity matrix. Um, one of the particular reasons that they need to do that in here is because this script, you'll notice it gets run every time I'm editing things. And so if I was to copy that out and I was to start um, just hitting enter, well, the the rectangle's moving. Why is the rectangle moving? And it's well because each time I'm translating the origin 50 by 50, and then another 50 by 50, well, 50 by 55, and then another 50 by 55, and then another 50 by 55. And so they have put in here context set transform back to the identity matrix to say, no, no, no we, we want to reset the drawings uh, context. Um, Trans transformation that it's doing. Uh, we, we want to stop doing the translation after we've drawn this rectangle. Uh, so that the next time around the loop when we do the translation we're doing it for the first time not uh, on top of the previous one. Okay so let's take that and let us paste this into our code here. So we're going to now translate that drawing context uh, to make it a bit more obvious I'm just going to do 150 pixels to the right and I'm going to save it 
and I'm going to go back into Firefox and we've got these items here and I haven't hit refresh yet and now if I hit refresh you should see all of that stuff jump 150 pixels to the right and there it goes okay back to the slides just as we can translate the coordinate system we can also rotate the coordinate system so if we pop to Mozilla's demo of this one uh, we can see that it rotates by a certain angle that angle is in radians and if you would like to um, use degrees well you can take the degrees and then multiply by math.py and divide by 180 and, uh, to translate that into uh, into radians and so if we go to their example down here uh, we can see that what they're doing is they are rotating the coordinate system by 45 degrees and then they are filling a rectangle uh, centered on the point 70 comma 0 but now we're at 45 degrees that's 70 comma and 0 that way and so we could change that to 46 degrees um, 66 degrees a bit further 16 degrees not very much and we can see that we can rotate it by different amounts um, let's take that one as well uh, let's paste that in here and so we've translated the origin to the right and then we've rotated uh, the origin um, around its new origin by 16 degrees and if we pop to Firefox we should see those just turn to a little jointy angle a slight bit and there they go they just turned a little bit to a jaunty angle uh, so they're now being drawn kind of down this way um, okay let's keep on going so that is translating and rotating our coordinate system uh, now something I've done in there um, if we pop back here you'll notice that the hello world is painted over the top of this circle oh and incidentally if we inspect that element we can see that we've still just got a single canvas element it's not that the hello world or the line or the circular elements underneath it uh, they, they are just pixels painted into this rectangle uh, but we've painted the hello world over the top of the circle that's not the only kind of compositing that we could do we could for instance say well actually I want to treat that circle as being clip bound only paint the part of hello world that overlaps with it or I would like to exclusive or my pixels so that uh, I'm if you like deleting the pixels uh, over the top of the circle and so these are different compositing modes and there is a property on the um, on the drawing context called global composition a uh, global composite operation which we can adjust and there's a bunch of different modes painting where only where the destination is already opaque combining the images and making the overlap lighter etc etc and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a little demo of this that I uh, made earlier let me just close some of those Mozilla tabs and over here we have the composite example and so it's starting off doing uh, okay we've drawn a rectangle with a particular gradient and we've drawn then a circle in a different color and at the moment this is just doing source over as the composite mode uh, I could change it to do source in and then this picture is going to change a little bit when I set the composite mode to source in before I do that drawing it's in fact no longer have we got that rectangle but we've only got the parts of the circle that overlap with where the rectangle was uh, we could do source out which means well we've, we've lost the rectangle and we've now only got the parts of this circle that didn't overlap with the rectangle uh, we could go source atop uh, well now we've got the rectangle back again with its gradient and we've only got the parts of the circle that overlap with it we could say destination in and so now I've just got um, the parts of the rectangle that overlapped with the circle you'll notice it's parts of the rectangle because we've got the gradient going on here um, so that that gradient's on the rectangle it's not on the circle and so destination in now I've got that section uh, kind of curiously shaped uh, section that looks a little bit like a spinning top uh, of the rectangle that has that gradient uh, destination out I've just taken a chunk out of my rectangle with a gradient in it uh, lighter uh, combines the pixel values of the two uh, in such a way that it tends to make the pixels lighter uh, lighten takes the um, uh, if I recall this takes the uh, whichever is brighter uh, of the two uh, so where these have overlapped and their their pixels are different it's it's taking the brighter ones 
uh, exclusive ore and now we've got the rectangle uh, where it doesn't overlap with the circle we've got the circle where it doesn't overlap with the rectangle but where we've got overlap between the two uh, we've got nothing and luminosity does an interesting one where it copies the hue and saturation from one but the brightness from the other so here we're getting the hue and the saturation from this gradient uh, but the brightness of whatever this circle is now let me open up the canvas examples the source code for this and so in here uh, well I tell you what let's go and open it up in Visual Studio Code you might be a little bit more used to seeing it in there um, so this is uh, composite.html and so here we see that we have um, again we've just got a canvas with the idea of the canvas uh, in this case I've got a div underneath that's called options panel and uh, you'll notice here that I've not got any buttons between uh, within it but here I've suddenly got buttons uh, that's because this composite example script is adding the buttons as well so if I open the composite example script uh, well I've wrapped the thing in an anonymous function as a module kind of force of habit really uh, I've got use strict to turn strict mode on in terms of how uh, JavaScript is parsed in the browser here I am getting the um, element with the ID the canvas which if we look in composite.html uh, is this one that's the, uh, the one with the canvas uh, but I also grab uh, a reference called options for the element with the ID of options panel and that is uh, this particular div here and then what am I doing well I'm saying I would like to start with the default composite style of source over um, uh, this is just setting in a local variable that's not set on a graphics context yet that's just declared a local variable I've declared a local variable array with some source styles I would like to use in my demo um, and then I have a function redraw well let's skip over redraw for a moment uh, because what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to say for each of these composite styles in this array uh, so composite styles this array and so I've called for each on it and this is a bit of JavaScript that then lets me run a function on each value of that in the array so this this function is going to get called first with source over then with source in then with source out and so for each of those I am creating a button using the DOM API I'm creating a text node to go within that button uh, that has the name of that style and I'm making that button have that text and then I'm putting that button into the options panel so this is how those buttons are getting there I'm adding them dynamically from the example script uh, that you can have a look at and I'm setting the on click action and in this case I've just done it by setting the on click attribute of the button uh, to point to a function that says well what I would like to do is I would like to set this variable up here composite style to whatever the composite style for that button is uh, and then I would like to call my redraw function uh, and my redraw, redraw function that is getting the context from the canvas starting off by resetting the global composite operation clearing the canvas entirely clear rect from the top left zero zero to the canvas width and the canvas height uh, and then I've got this bit here that is creating a gradient fill uh, so to create a gradient fill I need to ask the context uh, please create me a linear gradient starting from the location 00, zero ending at the location 200 200 and I'm adding these color stops and so the one at, right at the beginning uh, is this particular color whatever that is and the one right at the end is this particular color whatever that is now I have a gradient I'm beginning a path and I'm setting the fill style to be this gradient that I've just created and then I am filling that rectangle and so if I was to let's comment out for the moment the rest of this function and so if I was to do that we would now um, oops, what has happened here why am I <clears throat> Why am I not seeing the commented out version down here? Um, that's interesting. That's unexpected. Hang on. That's set composite style. Redraw. For some reason, it's not saved, has it? Oh, if I read, if I refresh, it is okay. So it's just cached an old version. And so if I um, 
there we go if I do alt as well and force it to refresh the uh, the cache of the JavaScripts as well uh, now we can see that I just have um, I just have the rectangle with the gradient so that was how I did the code for doing the gradient and it is basically calling API commands on that drawing context again to create a linear gradient uh, now we know that's the case let's put this code back in and the next thing it does after drawing the rectangle is it sets the composite operation to be uh, whichever one of these I have selected so remember that that button click goes and sets that button's composite style into this variable up here composite style and now I am setting that to be the global composite operation on the graphics context and then I'm beginning a path and drawing my circle setting a fill style to that solid color and then calling fill and so that is going to draw that circle using that composite style uh, overlapping with the rectangle and then at the end I am just for a uh, good habit uh, resetting the graphics context global composite operation uh, back to source over back to the default so that is what my script is doing uh, and I'll write at the end so that it so that something appears before I click any of the buttons I'm asking it to do a redraw and that first redraw will be with the default composite style of source over okay so that was just a quick explanation of what is going on in um, in this particular example and so that is why then when I click this it changes the composite style to each of those and uh, one of the things I should explain is that that is not all of the composite styles that are available that is just the composite styles that I happened to put uh, into this example um, if I go back um, to the uh, to this one here and if I was to find uh, where am I can I find um, let us go and shrink this down a bit and let's go search and I would like to find uh, global composite operation and here we have the Mozilla documentation for the global composite operation and you'll see that they've got some examples as well um, they've actually got uh, rather a lot more examples for more different composite styles I, I, I figured I have kind of shown you enough different ones there so that you know that you've got some different ones uh, okay so that was compositing next when would I like to use a canvas well one of the key differences between canvases and another tool that we'll see in another video scalable vector graphics is that this canvas is a single element and so back over here no matter what I've drawn on top of the canvas uh, if I inspect it down here I've still got a single element I don't have nodes for these circles lines and text etc um, that means I can't use CSS in a CSS file or in the HTML to style the contents I can only uh, change the style the contents by um, changing these fill styles in the code um, I can't just open composite.html and start going uh, well I'm going to change my stroke styles in here so easily uh, <clears throat> it also means that if I attach event listeners those event listeners are attached to the canvas not to the lines and circles I've drawn within them the the event listeners are on the entire uh, the entire gray rectangle here not just on the text or the circle um, but it's quite quick at compositing and it's also quite quick if there's lots of objects and it's relatively simple I mean that that's not a that's not a super complicated uh, API for drawing commands I mean, it's quite short quite neat quite um, relatively easy to understand in that sense now from this point uh, I guess it would be over to you so if you go and have a look um, at the API uh, you'll find that there are an awful lot more different uh, methods that we can call on that uh, rendering context 2d and you can play around with it uh, one of the things I have got though to kind of close things off is another small demo that I will uh, talk you through let me copy that link and let me paste it into Firefox over here and so here we can see I've got a little ray, uh, a little gray rectangle uh, but you can kind of see that as I uh, as I mouse over it I'm getting little trails of circles uh, going along and it, it it's animating relatively easily 
and if I open up canvas example.js that is this piece of code here well let me let me go and open this over here so canvas example.js in this case uh, once again I'm saying use strict mode once again wrapping it in an anonymous function that is immediately applied uh, just force of habit once again uh, getting the canvas element by its ID uh, but in this case what I'm doing as I'm saying I would like to have a little array of points um, I would like to remember the last 50 points so remember that as a local variable and I have a little function here for creating a new point and so what this is going to do uh, this is going to and first of all it's going to uh, subtract the left top left hand corner co corner of the canvas itself um, to make sure that it gets the coordinates uh, relative to this point here uh, rather than relative to the top left of the web page as the mouse events might give me and it is going to push little objects that say well X is this X location Y is this location into that array and if I've got too many of them I'm doing the point array dot shift uh, command that basically means to uh, uh, remove the first element of the array and return it but I'm not returning it I'm just throwing it away and so that is uh, uh, pushing new ones onto the end and dropping old ones off the beginning of that array so that that array will only get 50 elements longer uh, long um, <clears throat> in the redraw I'm getting the uh, the context and every frame I am first of all filling the rectangle with that uh, with that gray background uh, so set the fill style to be a darkish gray and fill a rectangle that is starting in the top left of the origin and is the full client width and client height of the canvas and then what I'm doing is for each element in that point array I am working out well what's a fraction if we're at element number one that's one fiftieth let's make that intensity then uh, 1 50th of um, 211 plus 40 and the reason I've done that is uh, is basically that I've set the back to a, the background to be a charcoal color and so I want the darkest one to be no darker than charcoal and so that is why there is a plus 40 on the intensity uh, the radius of this I'd also like to get smaller so that fraction 1 50th or whatever um, let's remember that fraction and calculate a radius that's that fraction and then let's go in here and let us set the fill style and the stroke style to be a particular color that we've worked out um, from that intensity so a, a, a gray of that intensity that intensity that intensity in RGB uh, begin path and fill myself a circle around wherever that uh, wherever that point location was uh, and at the end uh, just so that we are um, even if the mouse stops you'll see those circles gradually shrink uh, let's make that bigger and you'll see the circles gradually shrinking uh, so every time we draw it we are pushing an undefined point into the array and I've said well look if we, we only draw this thing if its x is undefined uh, but that kind of means that after a little while that array is going to empty and I'm only going to have undefined things and it's not going to draw anything uh, okay but how do points get into that array well what I've done is I have added an event listener to the canvas to this rectangle as a whole and so every time a mouse move event happens on top of the canvas uh, it is calling this function here and that is calling my new point uh, with the um, client x and the client y the x and y with respect to the <coughs> with respect to the page on the uh, on the mouse position and so up here it is then deducting the um, uh, the what what the origin of the canvas is to work out what's that relative to the canvas and pushing that point into the array and then I have set uh, at every 20 milliseconds let's call redraw and so that is how this particular example is running uh, but so it's using mouse move events on the canvas to fill an array of points and then at every frame every 20 milliseconds 
blank the canvas and draw some of those circles at, at intensities that we calculate. Okay, sorry, that was a bit of a rambling explanation of that demo, uh, but you can have a look at that code and hopefully at um, 61 lines, including blank lines and comments um, and, white, uh, and white space, hopefully it's not too long an example to have a look through. And I am going to stop the recording here.